The art of translation is a difficult art. That is to do it successfully. I think I did my first translation, which was of Malarmé, when I was very young indeed. I'm 71 now. I think I made this translation more than 50 years ago. And in all that time, I've only made enough translations to make one small pamphlet, which I called Pour Lacan, Poems from the French. And none of my translations ever seem to have caught anyone's eye. Uh, my poems in English have been a bit more fortunate, but um, I've never actually worked out which poem of Malabé's I, I translated, uh, because when I was 20, 50 years ago, I was interested perhaps more in making it rhyme and making it have an impact, and perhaps that was the right thing to do. I still think the translation is quite good. The apparition. A melancholy moon, moon where dreaming angels wept, pale tears, aid amid the beam the hazy flowers kept, and fingering their bows drew from a thousand strings a symphony of clouds to gild an angel's wings. The memory of the kiss you gave wove sadness through my dreams and days, held for a moment in the mind, made human passion but a blind. I searched the pavements of the night, but you came dancing in the sun and scattered from half-open hand the perfumed tears, the stars begun. I think it's quite a good poem, though whether it bears much resemblance to the mal I make supposed to, I'm not sure. I really must find out the poem. After that, I made no translations for an incredible number of decades. And then, uh, in my mid-60s, I rediscovered perhaps discovered for the first time French poetry, and I tried a few poems, uh, poets that are not necessarily popular in this country, um, Pierre-Jean Jouve, and Jacques Reda, and André Ardelet, and, of course, Reverdy, who is well-known, and Prévert, who is well-known, I think that was about it on Dano and Emmanuel. And um, I then spent a lot of time reading the, uh, the poetry in translation, the bilingual translations of Jacques Reda. There are not that many, probably about three translations of his poems and one of his enormous, marvellous prose poems, The Ruins of Paris. Uh, and his work, even with a bilingual translation, it's very difficult to keep the images fixed in one's mind. His, 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 his French is extremely complex. And I've seen it described by a professional translator as dense. Uh, yeah, and, um, this is certainly true. Um, I've been trying recently to translate, using a, a base prose translation, a poem from one of his collections which has never been put into English, uh, L'Adoption du système métrique, The Adoption of the Metric System. And, and uh, I've had this base translation done by somebody bilingual for a month. Uh, I'm, to be honest, not getting terribly far with it. Um, this is not that... Whether this is perhaps not one of his best poems, or I'm just not particularly good at, as a translator, or this poem perhaps presents extreme difficulties of translation, I'm not really sure. Um, the opening section of the poem is, is beautiful to read in French. L'inspection. O oh Dieu, qui me délègue à des fins de contrôle, je peux dire c'est bien encore un coup de les fleurs fleurissent, les bourgeons éclatent, les douleurs s'épaissent ce matin au joint de mon épaule. Son billet dans ce train, tout se coalisse contre moi. Je m'expose à payer une amende N'importe, entre les bois, au temps pâle d'amande, on voit déjà flamber le soufre de colza et courir les frissons du jeune blé. The difficulty is here. The, the, the prose translation of the first line um, is to the God from whom I am appointed with the aim to control. This clearly makes no sense whatsoever. And I translated this as, to the God who has granted me authority. 
and I thought that was a very good, effective beginning. Unfortunately, uh, the rest of the poem uh, presents, so far, insuperable difficulties. Um, some of it is straightforward enough, je peux dire, I can say, c'est bien, it's okay. Encore un coup, un coup les fleurs fleurissent. Um, it's all for the best, the flowers bloom again, the buds burst, the ache in my shoulder is finally gone. Um, we're quite straightforward there. But then, at one point, the poem becomes extremely difficult to translate. Je suis mes lunettes la vitre. This literally means, I clean my glasses and the window. And this clearly would not make for good poetry in English. And I realise at this point I'm going to have to do a lot more work and think this poem through. There are some marvellous images in the poem. Um, a stormy sky, as April yellow and greens, light up pillars of rain, regardless. That is a magnificent couplet. But it, it, it's mixed amongst parts in French where the translation simply does not make sense, neither to me nor to the bilingual translator of the original verse. My fingertips touch stakes and bells. We're not getting anywhere here. This does not make sense as poetry. It does not make any kind of sense as poetry. And I realise I'm going to simply have to think my way through, read some more translations of Rader, and try to get into his mind and perhaps do what Pound did um, when he translated de Milo's and simply omit some parts of it that simply don't work for me and try to make some kind of sense out of this very complex field of translation. I now know why Pound was so um, attacked, because he didn't stick to the original language, even though clearly he knew it, uh, because it didn't make good poetry. And this is a very complex and complicated field. Um, I did translate, I think quite successfully, another poem of um, Reda. Uh, his poem, one of his best poems, is, is a poem from a set of poems uh, on, on the called, called uh, the Elegiac Calendar. Uh, and, and the, this is not a sequence which is entirely successful, but um, the, 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 the first poem, January, is extremely beautiful. Ce que j'aime en hiver, c'est la longue nuit des branches contre un ciel sombre où des traits doucement lumineux de turquoise du, de rose un peu mauve d'orange ou de vert et de gris gris pâle fugineux qui font avec ce noir un saisissant contraste. On imagine en écriture au sens secret dont l'encre indélible imprime sur la chaste horizon le poème obscur de la forêt. Mais ce n'est qu'une vieille image, une autre encore, de croire que la branche inerte sans couleur se dresse comme un bras de malheureux implore ou se tord dans le vent pour dire sa douleur. En vérité, l'hiver est la saison parfaite où chaque branche emplit sa forme exactement et n'est rien d'autre qu'une branche qui répète sa présence accomplie entre le fond dormant du jour et le torrent sans rumeur des nuages. Non, pas même en élan, ni la tranquillité, aucune insignement caché, pas de pressage, mais là, droite dans l'air, qui semble en habiter, pure comme dans l'air, parfois l'espérance d'image. And this was my translation, which I think works quite well. January. What I love most about winter is the nakedness of branches against the pearl-grey sky as daybreak mute shadows into shades, blends them with pale smoke, stark against the darkness. I imagine secretly staining the virgin horizon with indelible ink, creating in secret a poem of the forest that seems no more than a sepia snapshot. Just one image remains, the still branch without colour, writhing under the wind like a beggar's arm, with grief its manifest. Between the dreaming depths of the void and the lowering wave of cloud forms, no hidden lesson or portent remains, only there where the air is occasionally crowded with hope or images. I think this is quite a reasonable translation. At that time, I had not read the translation done uh, in um, Kelly and Calafer's The New French Poetry. And the problem is, had I read the translation, which was by David Kelly, a professional translator, I think, I would have found it very difficult to forget his translation and make my own. This is the problem where poems have been translated before. Unless it is a basic prose translation, 
one is then stuck with the memory of how someone else translates it. And it's very difficult to get away because the translation stays in the mind as much as the original poem, perhaps because the translation is in one's own language, whereas the, the original is in, not in one's own language and therefore uh, remains a kind of vague, cloudy image, however beautiful, uh, but still cloudy and slightly vague. And this is a very, very difficult thing to actually do, is to get into the mind of someone from a different world in a different language, which one has not learned. Well, I was learning French on and off from 11 to, to, to 18. Then again, in my 60s, I took myself again. And it's very, very difficult. Um, I think the only per place worth learning French in English is, is Oxford, because they have the best French department of 31 tutors. And uh, I wish, uh, if I'd had my life again, I, I would certainly have tried to go there and, and, and learn French. I once met somebody in Paris who um, was at my own, our own son's uh, college, Balia, uh, and his French was so good that I thought he was a Frenchman. I was astonished when he began to speak in English. Presumably, uh, somebody French would have realised that his French was <laughs> English-French, but uh, my son always tells me I, I, I sound like an Englishman who's been well-educated in French, but still an Englishman nonetheless, and I suspect this... Uh, Young man was the same, but he gave us some, some vital direction. I was completely lost trying to find uh, our hotel in Paris. Um, I think, and I hope, that still at 71 I will be able to do some, some more work translating. Uh, but perhaps the book I chose was not a good book of radars. Um, for some reason, this poem, and I've checked some more in the same collection, are very, very difficult to translate. In a, in a meaningful sense. One can translate them literally, or someone else translate them. But to actually turn them into a finished poem is, is a very difficult art. Uh, and this is why I so believe that Pound was a great translator as well as a great poet. Uh, I've been listening recently to some of his um, readings of his poems, and uh, particularly Sestina Altaforte, and uh, I, I could not, even when I was younger, have put such power and such vigour into that translation. I'm not talking as a poet or as a translator, I'm talking as somebody who was actually professionally trying to read a poem um, aloud. The, 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 the power in, in the opening lines of Sestina Altaforte, translated by Pound, it makes one, one's, um, the hair on one's neck stand up on, on end. And, and Robert Graves said this, that the, 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 the true poet makes this happen. Unfortunately, I don't think Graves was a true poet. I don't think he was a poet at all. Uh, I think one of the, the, the greatest phonies of modern literature was, was Robert Graves. I think he wrote nothing worthwhile, except possibly the, the, the Elizabethan Down, Wanton, Down. But I, found his, I find his poetry extremely strange. Not real poetry at all. And The White Goddess, one of the maddest books that's ever been written. Um, quite why he, he sustained this, this uh, professional... There are, there, are, there are various people who have done this. They create this kind of man of letters role. Uh, 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 and uh, of course, Graves was famous because of his book about uh, World War One, Goodbye to All That. And um, somehow he made himself famous by his application to reviewing and translating various things. I still find his work very, very empty. Uh, and it's, it does not speak to me at all. I think this is the problem. Why does this happen? Is it because in real life, one would not have got on with the person. There are clearly, we all have our blind spots. Strangely, one of mine is boldly. I can see he is, in a sense, a wonderful poet. But he's not a poet I would actually read for pleasure. And, and uh, at once I treat myself to his entire works read in French by a professional actor. And I followed them in a, a bilingual French and English text. And um, it's a strange phenomenon of French poetry. It tends not to be read by poets, but by professional actors. Uh, the same happens to Proust. Uh, and the difficulty is that French, the French actually don't just seem to speak quickly. They actually do speak uh, quite a percentage more uh, syllables per minute than, 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 the, than, the, than the Anglophone world. And, and this makes it extremely difficult, even with a working knowledge of French and a text in front of one, to actually follow the actual French, which is a great pity. Um, I have no doubt rambled on because <laughs> translation